let's discuss the shapes of indifference curves in case of perfect substitutes perfect complements neutral goods and bad goods first let's discuss the shape of the indifference curves when the goods are perfect substitutes to each other the two goods are perfect substitutes when the consumer is willing to substitute one good for the other at a constant rate as an example we can say red pencil and blue pencil they are perfect substitutes and the consumer may be willing to substitute one red pencil for one blue pencil two red pencils for two blue pencils etc at a constant rate here a consumer likes pencils but he doesn't care about the color at all suppose a consumer selects a consumption bundle of 10 10 that is 10 blue and 10 red pencils then the consumer will be indifferent to any other consumption bundle that has 20 pencils in it it can be 12 8 that is 12 blue and 8 red pencils or 15 5 that is 15 red and 5 blue pencils etc but as more pencils is preferred to less pencils any consumption bundle which has more than 20 pencils will be preferred to the consumption bundle which has exactly 20 pencils in the figure as we can see the indifference curves are parallel straight lines because the goods are perfect substitutes since they are straight lines the slope of these ic's will be constant suppose the consumption bundle is 10 10 and we increase the amount of the red pencil by 1 unit that is to 11 so the consumption bundle becomes 11 10 how much do we have to change the blue pencil the answer is clearly that we have to decrease the blue pencil by 1 unit this is because of their perfect substitutability with one another thus the indifference curve through 10 10 has a slope of minus 1 the same procedure can be carried out at any bundle of goods with the same results in this case all the indifference curves have a constant slope of minus 1 the important fact about perfect substitutes is that the indifference curves have a constant slope suppose we graphed blue pencils on the vertical axis and pairs of red pencils on the horizontal axis then if we increase the pair of red pencil by 1 unit the consumption bundle shifts to 12 10 this is because here we are increasing one pair of red pencils thus to be on the same indifference curve the consumer has to give up two units of blue pencils so the slope will be minus 2 but the important fact about perfect substitutes is that the indifference curves have a constant slope now let's move on to perfect complements perfect complements are goods that are always consumed together in fixed proportions an example will be right shoes and left shoes a consumer always wear right and left shoes together suppose the consumption bundle for the right and left shoes is 10 10 if we add one more left shoe then the consumption bundle becomes 11 10 but this leaves the consumer indifferent to the original consumption bundle 10 10 this is because the extra right shoe doesn't do him any good the same thing happens if we add one more right shoe this means that the consumer is indifferent between the bundles 10 11 and 10 10 the figure shows the indifference curves for perfect complements the consumer always wants to consume the goods in fixed proportions to each other the indifference curves are l shaped with the vertex of the l occurring at the points where the number of left shoes is equal to the number of right shoes here a and c occurs at the vertex in the extreme left ic at point a the vertex of l represents the consumption bundle 10 10 that means 10 left shoes and 10 right shoes if we increase the number of right and left shoes together and in the same proportion the ic shifts to the right and to the new vertex point here point c represents a higher ic with the same number of right and left shoes point c provides 
greater satisfaction to the consumer than point A. The important thing about perfect complements is that the consumer prefers to consume the goods in fixed proportions. Now, let's move on to bads. A bad is a commodity that the consumer doesn't like. For example, suppose that the consumer loves pizza but dislikes milkshakes. In case of bad goods, less goods are preferred to more goods. So, this means that less milkshakes are preferred to more milkshakes. Take the consumption bundle 10-5 where the consumer consumes 10 pizzas and 5 milkshakes. If the consumer is to be given more milkshakes, what we have to do in order to keep him on the same indifference curve? Since milkshake is a bad good to the consumer, to keep him on the same indifference curve, we have to provide him more pizzas. This is to compensate him for having to put up with the milkshakes. In the figure, suppose A shows the consumption bundle 10-5 where he consumes 10 units of pizza and 5 units of milkshake. Suppose we increase the number of units of milkshake to 6, that is to point B. Then, to keep him on the same indifference curve, we have to increase the amount given of pizzas, that is to point C. This is because the goods that are desirable to the consumer such as pizzas should be given so as he will be compensated for the increased bad good which is given. So here the marginal rate of substitution must increase so as to keep the consumer on the same indifference curve. Thus the indifference curves have a positive slope. Now let's move on to the neutral goods. A good is a neutral good if the consumer doesn't care about it one way or the other. That means that neither does he like the good nor does he dislike the good. Suppose the consumer is neutral about milkshakes but he likes pizzas. So he only cares about the amount of pizza he has and doesn't care at all about how many milkshakes he has. The more pizzas the better but adding more milkshakes doesn't affect him one way or the other. In the figure, we can see that the ICs are vertical line. This is because he doesn't care about the amount of milkshakes he consumes. But he does care about the number of pizzas and more of them gives him more satisfaction. And ICs to the right gives him more satisfaction as his amount of pizza consumed increases. At the same time, if we change the axis of the neutral, the milkshake will be in the horizontal axis or x-axis and pizza in the vertical axis. So now the ICs will be horizontal as he doesn't care about milkshakes at all which is in the X axis. So higher the amount of pizzas consumed gives him greater satisfaction. So as the ICs move higher and higher the amount of satisfaction obtained rises. What if we have to depict an IC in case of two bad goods? Suppose we take the case of milkshake and soda, both of which the consumer doesn't like. Then at point A on the IC, suppose his consumption bundle 1010, where he is forced to consume 10 units of milkshake and 10 units of soda. If we increase the consumption of soda to 11 units, then to remain on the same indifference curve, the consumer has to reduce his consumption of milkshake as well. This is because both are bad goods. If we increase the consumption of soda, the consumer moves from point A to point B. But to remain on the same indifference curve, the consumer has to reduce the amount of milkshake consumed. So, the consumer reaches point C. Here, A and C yield the same amount of utility or satisfaction for the consumer. This is because when we increase the quantity of one good, we reduce the quantity of the other good consumed. As we can see in the figure, the ICs of two bad goods will be of this shape. And in the indifference map given, the ICs to the left gives more and more satisfaction as the goods are bad. So, less of the goods is preferred to more of the goods. I hope these concepts are clear. Thank you.